Hi students, my name is Charlotte Stewart and I'll be your instructor for this course. I am thrilled to have you here and we are excited to have you here at Colin. I hope you're ready for an interesting math course and hopefully it'll be very beneficial to you. It's not like one of those math courses where you leave every day and wonder, now when am I going to ever use this again? Because everything we do in this course, we're going to try to relate to the real world and to your various technical degree programs. You're going to see in this course, Math 1753, Quantitative Reasoning, that we will cover the following topics. We're going to cover a little bit of college algebra, and many of you have already had some algebra background from your high school days. We're also going to be covering personal finance, and that's going to be everything from budgeting to how to purchase a new automobile or new home, how to invest your money with simple or compound interest and retirement accounts, and even how to read the stock market report. So hopefully that will be very beneficial to you as you go out into your own and even possibly create your own business and need those accounting financial techniques. From there, we'll go on and we'll look at a special branch of mathematics known as logic. And in that uh, branch of study, you also look at many diagrams. And this will again be very useful to your various fields of study. From there, we'll look at some statistical and probability techniques. And then we will end up with some measurements. With the measurements, we'll look at the metric system, which we use here a lot with our automotive programs and our precision machinery programs. We'll also be looking at some various instruments of measurement that you will be using. And we will look at some right angle trigonometry and geometry because in the construction fields and many other fields, you need to have these aspects and know these ratios to really help you do your job better. So I'm hoping this course will be very beneficial to you. Now, I've been here since the year 2008 teaching at Colin, and prior to that, I taught at Heinz Community College for two years, and then I was for 15 years at Southeastern Louisiana University. So I am a transplant to Mississippi. But no matter where you move to or where you go in your various fields, these branches of mathematics and the techniques that you'll learn in this course are going to be very helpful to you. Now, a little bit more about me. Um, we, my office is here in the Dow Young building up in room 228. And of course, this is going to be our regular classroom, Dow Young 126. Now, if you haven't already, you can go ahead and log on to the Colin website. It's colin.edu. Now, when you go into there at the top of the Colin website, you will notice in the top right corner, there's an icon that says Canvas. If you click on Canvas, it will ask you to log in. You'll log in with a username that is your Colin ID number. So just type in your student ID numbers. Now, if you happen to have zeros in front of your ID number, don't put those in. Then your password is your six digit birthday. Now, if you were born March 22nd, you'll need to put 0322 and then the last two numbers in the year of your birth. So zero is used as a placeholder for that password. This is also the same username and password that you'll log in to any Colin computer here on campus, which we have a number of them for your personal use. Now, once you log in, to the Canvas part of the Colin website. This is specific for students. And any courses that you are taking, you can see there if your instructor has published some information for you. And I have published our course information there. So you should see if on the left, you can see dashboard or courses and click that button. Then you will see the name of our course, Math 1753. When you click it, it'll bring up our personalized web page. And the information we're about to go over is on that page under course info or under syllabus. Now, I won't go through every little line of the syllabus with you today, but there are some special details I'd like to point out. I've already told you a little about me and my name and my office, but you can also contact me anytime outside of class by messaging me in Canvas or emailing me at the email address listed, or you can use the telephone and just dial me up. 
Now, I'm happy to come early or stay late if my office hours don't match up with your schedule. So just keep me posted on that. The way our class is structured, I'll be lecturing part of our hour every day, but then the rest of our time, I'm gonna be circulating around like your own personal tutor. And you'll be able to do most, if not all, of your homework right here in the classroom. And this class does meet two days a week. We meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 to 9.18. And that will allow you to leave here and get to your next class in a timely manner. Now about a textbook, you do not have to go out and buy one that's all been included in your tuition and fees. And it is an ebook. So when you log into the computer, you'll have access to that and you do not need to carry around a heavy hard copy textbook. Now, I've already mentioned the basic topics that we'll be covering in our course, and you can see some more specific outcome competencies and some goals and objectives listed in that syllabus if you click on syllabus. Now, I did say we're a two-day-a-week class, so that means we don't have many chances to be absent, so try not to be absent. You are allowed four absences, and then you're cut out and withdrawn from the course on the fifth absence. And I hope that doesn't happen to anyone. But we know things happen and you can be sick or you can have a family emergency. Save up those absences for those important times. Now, if you're out uh, for a licensure exam or a field trip or some special colon um, excused absence, then that will not count against your four absences. Now the grading scale in here is the standard 10 point grading scale. So 100 to 90 is an A, 89 to 80 is a B, 79 to 70 is a C, etc, etc. And your overall course grade will be a combination of what you make on the homework that we submit daily in class, uh, what you make on unit tests, we'll have three unit tests, and then what you make on the final exam. The breakdown is 25% of your homework will be your overall grade, 50% of those unit tests will go into your overall grade, and 25% will be the final exam. And of course, I like to schedule a good review day and like a practice test and things like that right before we take any test, so that'll better prepare you with your studying. Now, speaking of testing, we do adhere to an academic honesty policy here on the Colin campus, and it is a serious thing. Um, if you break that and you plagiarize or cheat, that is actually a felony offense. And you can read all about this on page 19 in the student handbook. You may have a hard copy of that, or you can just access under the student publications on the Colin website. I don't expect we'll have any issues with that, but just wanted to make you aware of that. Now, some other classroom protocol things that you need to know about in our math class would be you are allowed to use a scientific calculator. Now, I will have some of these, a classroom set, to be used in here. If you want to purchase one, just make sure it's a scientific calculator. The one we use in class is the TI-30X because it's so user-friendly. Now, you will not be allowed to use your cell phone calculator because so many people have smartphones and the internet is there and all of that. So that again goes back to our academic honesty policy and we just don't want there to be any kind of temptation or any kind of misunderstanding. So you can use a regular calculator in the classroom and that's fine. Now about the classroom, I try to adhere to as many safety guidelines as possible. Because of that, we ask that you do have your ID visible so that everyone on campus can know that you are supposed to be here on our campus. You're not a stranger lurking about. Um, it is possible you could be fined a $25 fine if a campus police officer or other type of officer or staff member would see you and cite you for not having your ID visible. Uh, the door in our classroom remains locked. We can get out but other people can't get in unless we let them in. And because of that, I'm gonna ask that you keep your movement in and out of class to a minimum. I like to see students, once they come into the classroom, they not exit again, because that coming in and out is a distraction. Um, and cell phones can also be a distraction, so we ask that you keep those on silent and that you don't use those during the classroom time. 
Now, I did tell you that I'll be lecturing part of the time, kind of explaining the problems and going over the procedures before we all jump into the homework. And we can work together with the homework, and I'll be circulating around, as I said, and helping you with any type of homework questions you have while you're here in class. Um, but you'll need to be able to hear me do those things, and because of that, I ask that you do not use earphones or earbuds in class and that if you wear any type of hooded shirt or jacket, you do not pull that up over your head because that does impair your ability to hear um, and we just don't wanna have that issue. Since we're in a computer lab, I need to also ask that you do not bring food or drinks into the computer lab. We have had students bring a drink, sneak it in, and accidentally knock it over on a keyboard. That happened about eh, a couple of years ago in this room. And the young lady had a lid on her cup of drink from the grill, but when she accidentally knocked it over, uh, it fried a keyboard. And so our tech people are not happy when that happens, and none of us are. So please do not bring food or drinks into this room. Um, I mentioned we will be having tests. I only really have three unit tests scheduled and then the final exam. And if you happen to miss one of those major test days, get with me uh, with an excuse and you can have a makeup test on makeup test day, which is at the end of the semester. Also, one more important thing you need to be aware of is the American Disability Act. We do adhere to that, and if any of you have a disability of any type or you need some type of special accommodations like recording the lectures or a magnifier on your computer screen or you need your uh, paper tests that we take in large or anything like that, you can get those accommodations with the proper documents if you go see Ms. Jordan Stevens, who is in the Enrollment Services Office, uh, just right directly above the bookstore and the cafeteria uh, in the Henley Building, and you can contact her. You'll also see her information, including her email and number, telephone number, in the syllabus and the important information, the course info button. Now, whew, that's a lot of stuff. Well, I look forward to meeting with you soon and going over some of the nitty-gritty of these math topics that we're going to be getting into. And um, I hope you have a wonderful semester, and that should cover a lot of the basics. If you happen to have any questions once you read over the course info or the syllabus, just come see me, give me a call, or shoot me a message in Canvas or email. You have a great day and a wonderful semester. We're thrilled to have you here at Colin.